One Zambia, One Nation, and welcome to Zanis News. We look at the top stories in the news. Government committed to supporting East Irrigation Schemes. China commended for construction of Tazara Rail Line. 770 girls benefit from keeping girls in school projects in the Sangaza districts. Last two CDF projects commissioned in Chikankata district. Well, with the main news in detail, my name is Margaret Kangwa. Now, Vice President Mutale Nalumango has assured the Zambian people food security amidst the drought crisis that the country is faced with. Mrs. Nalumango says that the government will continue to ensure that lives are sustained, adding that government does not want to see anyone die of hunger. She says the government will take food to all the 86 affected districts in the country. Zanis reports that the vice president said this today when she attended HA service at Kisasa Central Congregation in Kalumbila district of northwestern province. Mrs. Nalumango says that the government is not looking at the drought as a disaster, but also an opportunity to invest in the energy sector. And Bishop Stefan Lukanga of the New Covenant Church International in Kalumbila District says uh, the drought situation that the country is facing should not be politicized. And now, Acting Eastern Province Permanent Secretary Lewis Mwape says a government has constructed 21 farmer led irrigation schemes through the Zambia Integrated Landscape Project under the World Bank in the province. Dr. Mwape says the construction of the irrigation schemes will increase farmer participation in horticultural production as a measure to curb the effects of the El Nino and support income generation. Dr. Mwape was speaking at the 46th Eastern Provincial Agriculture and Commercial Show in Chipata District. We have more in this report. More efforts are being made by government in collaboration with other stakeholders to promote massive crop production for farmers all year round. This is in the wake of climate change that has reduced crop production in Eastern Province and other parts of the country. Speaking at the 46th Eastern Provincial Agriculture and Commercial Show, CDCO Regional Manager Matthew Scandela says farmers must consider planting vegetables and early maturing variety seed with the coming of the irrigation scheme. Contribution to this show is that uh, we want farmers to understand that we are going through difficult uh, circumstances, especially on the El Nino uh, circles we are in today. We appeal to our farmers and uh, the guests of honor, sir, to encourage farmers to go into the vegetables. Because this climate change which has come, it's real. It won't change today. Therefore, in that gap, we are asking that Farmers should be encouraged to go into the agriculture production. Meanwhile, Eastern Province Agriculture and Commercial Chairperson Thomas Ntonga has appealed to government to prioritize mechanized equipment for farmers in the region. This opportunity to ask the government on behalf of farmers to liberate us small scale farmers that collected loans from banks to pay at a later stage. Or probably look at how best this loan can be, can be handled so that there is a breathing space. In view of the above uh, climate change, we, the small scale farmers of Yobon, are asking the government to leverage on the us procuring, procuring irrigation facilities so that the price of such facilities is reduced because this will improve food security of Eastern Province and the nation at large. Inducting Eastern Province Permanent Secretary Dr. Lewis Mwape, who earlier toured the stands, says government, working in collaboration with various stakeholders, will see to it that more is done to enhance productivity. The Ministry of Agriculture has developed a national mechanization strategy, which will enhance on farm processing and effective farm for increased productivity. The new Don government will continue to offer the agriculture support to the farmers through the Farmer Input Support Program, FISIP. 
We are doing this now even as a way of diversification. In the past, this only included maize growing. Today, we have included a number of other facilities and products so that we also diversify our agriculture. The 46th Southeastern Provincial Agriculture Show was held under the theme Creating a Competitive Future. Pato Dimbani Zanis News in Chipata District. And our Central Province Mumba Area Member of Parliament, Credo Nanjiwa, says the government has expanded the Sustainable Agriculture Financing Facility for the 2024 to 2025 farming season to include a wider range of agro products. And speaking when he officially opened the District Agriculture and Commercial Show in Mumbwa District, Mr. Nanjiwa, who is also Southern Province Minister, commended exhibitors for showcasing their crops despite the droughts that affected the district. Details in the following report. Mumbwa District Agriculture and Commercial Show has showcased farming equipment, various preserved vegetables and seed grains. Mumwa Member of Parliament, Credo Nanjua, who is also Southern Province Minister, graced the occasion. The new joint government under the able leadership of His Excellency has increased the products on the Sustainable Agricultural Financing Facility credit window for the 2024-2025 season to include not only seed and fertilizer, but also small-scale irrigation equipment, farm power mechanization, livestock, and aquaculture. This is to empower and give farmers a wider choice. District Agricultural and Commercial Show Society Chairperson Kefas Kamanga has encouraged farmers to access the latest information on agricultural production. Farmers need access to the latest information and training to implement new techniques effectively. Extension services, farmer cooperatives, and agriculture organizations play a critical role in disseminating uh, knowledge. The Zambia News and Information Services, ZANIS, had an opportunity to interview some agro enthusiasts and exhibitors at the event. Women are doing, our women are also into conservation. This is, these are the uh, exhibits that have been displayed. Apart from that, we are looking at climate resilience, uh, where women have to participate, even when we have this drought. I'm encouraging all farmers to come and see what these people in business are displaying. And we marry their display with the requirements of government so that you'll be in a position to actually cut out the agricultural system in a nice way in time and produce a lot. Zanis Mumbwa. While still in agriculture news, the Ministry of Agriculture in Chongo District of Lusaka Province has handed over 11 motorbikes to support agriculture extension officers in the area. The motorbikes, which have been purchased through the Zambia Emergency Food Production Facility, were distributed to the officers during a handover ceremony officiated by the District Commissioner, Ivan Slupia. Here is the report. Ministry of Agriculture has handed over 11 motorbikes to agriculture extension officers in Chongwe District who are serving in 11 agriculture camps in the area. The motorbikes which have been purchased under the Zambia Emergency Food Production Facility, which is funded by the African Development Bank, will enable the officers to undertake their duties within their respective camps with ease. Chongwa District Commissioner Dr. Evans Lupia, who handed over the motorbikes to the officers, stated that government remains committed towards making efforts to enhance agriculture services offered to farmers in the country. After the mines, agriculture is one sector which is being looked at as a very important sector to try and turn things around from an economic point of view. So you play a very, very important role. Dr. Lupia also implored the officers to take care of the motorbikes. It's important that uh, um, 
we use these motorbikes for intended purposes. Because if you don't use these motorbikes for intended purposes, in one way or the other, it will show. Take care of these assets. Make sure that you use them in such a way that you are caring. You see, anything that you use carelessly will not last you. I mean, it will not last. Anything. Acting District Agricultural Coordinating Officer Chintu Chintu stated that the motorbikes will address the challenge of long distances covered by camp extension officers to reach farmers in the area. We are fortunate enough to receive uh, 11 motorbikes uh, from the government with support from the African Development Bank. These are going to our extension officers. And the, our extension officers, they are working in remote and rural areas where it's access to the farmers is a challenge. So the motorbikes are very handy because they are able to move and navigate in those areas. So this is how we benefit from this. We expect to have improved extension services. Uh, our farmers will benefit from improved extension services. Sheila Makosa reporting for Zanis in Chongwe district. And now we get to Southern Province, where the Mazabuka Council has proposed to adjust the sugarcane levy from 30 ngwe to 100 kwacha per ton to enable the local authority increase its levy collection and respond to the demand for enhanced service delivery. However, the proposed adjustment has not settled well with sugarcane growers who have argued that the timing to increase the levy is wrong because they are currently grappling with climate change challenges. Kazela Hamwanda gives more on this report. 38 years ago, the Mazapka local authority settled for a 13 way revenue collection per ton on sugarcane, being the main economic activity in the district. This bylaw has stood since 1986 and has been outstanding, but the current economic system has forced the local authority to revisit this bylaw to maximize revenue collection for service delivery by the local authority. It's a process which started last year, before we even you know, talked about the, the drought which, is, which has hit each and every one of us this year. And the, looking at the level we are moving, the rate we are moving. Because honestly speaking, we are not going to remain on the 13 way. 13 way. Like those three coins, a 10 way, 10 way, and another 10 way. For 1,000 kilograms of cane. And the, for the law authority to be getting a bare minimum <coughs> from this industry. It's being unfair to the people who have given up their lands. Sugarcane growers and other stakeholders have been engaged to discuss the proposed 100 quarter per ton proposal by the local authority. But this proposal has not settled well with the sugarcane growers in the Mazapka Chamber of Commerce, citing wrong timing to adjust the change. Are you sure, Mr. President? You can talk to us the way you're talking to us, that you should move from 30 quarter to 100. Uh, from 13 way to 100. In an environment like this, we don't think so. The reality right now being a crisis, we must be, in fact, we're expecting relief from the authority. There is opportunity in the future, but op that opportunity is not now, ladies and gentlemen. You just heard exactly what we're discussing about the water levels in Kifri River are the worst that have ever been before. Let's not kid ourselves. This cane industry is in deep trouble. The future is very uncertain. I think they need to be looked at. Look, they need to be looked at in totality. And I appeal to the council to really look at it from that perspective. But there are communities that do not live in Mazabuka that do not see very much assistance from the council, and so they turn to the farmers in their area and ask for assistance. But the local authority maintains the proposed adjustment is required and the local authority cannot continue collecting 13 way in this era if service delivery in the community is to be achieved. It's ridiculous to talk about 13 way from 1986. Mm -hmm. We are saddened that we are undergoing a drought right now. It's of nobody's making. 
The same way the drought is affecting everyone else, even the local authority, we are affected badly. The next meeting for concluding the matter has been set for 19th July 2024. Gazala Wanda Zanis in Mazabuka district. Well, in other news, Ministry of Tourism Director of Tourism, Andrew Chilufia, says Zambia is grateful for the efforts and sacrifices made by the Chinese government during the construction of over 1,800 kilometers Tazara rail line that links Zambia and Tanzania. Dr. Chilufia said this when visiting Chinese Minister of Veterans Affairs, Pei Jinjiang, toward the Tazara Memorial Park in Chongwe which is the memorial site for Chinese nationals who died during the construction of the Tazara rail line in the 1970s. And Sarah Miti was at the site and brought us this report. Visiting Chinese Minister of Veteran Affairs today visited the Tazara memorial site in Chongwe district. This is the memorial site for the heroes that lost their lives during the construction of the 1,860-kilometer rail line in the 1970s. This is the rail line that links Zambia and Tanzania. The minister was accompanied by Director of Tourism in the Ministry of Tourism, who was representing Tourism Minister Rodney Sikumba, Zambia Tourism Agency senior officials and other senior government officials. He led the delegation in laying greets and toured the museum. Director of Tourism Dr. Andrew Chilufia says the memorial site is a reminder of the sacrifices made by the people of China in helping Zambia and has expressed gratitude to the Chinese government for the memorial park, which is said is important for posterity. So you are very, very welcome, and we appreciate what we've just learned uh, going through um, the tour of this museum and uh, the sacrifices that um, uh, the People's Republic of China made uh, on behalf of Zambia. We are very, very, very grateful. And this uh, history uh, will live um, for a long time to come in our future and uh, uh, continue to build on the friendship uh, between uh, China uh, and Zambia. And Mr. Jinja has described the tour as a walk down the history of the relationship between Zambia and China and the values that have continued to sustain the relations. We have just uh, taken a tour all together uh, of the Tadara Memorial Park and it's like we have uh, uh, walked the whole way again um, of the Tadara Railway. After the tour, we feel again about the respect and <laughs> equality, tenacity and the perseverance, and this year and the perseverance, and the selfless internationalism. <laughs> again, the Tadara spirit, which is right on the wall here. <laughs> the minister further reiterated the Chinese government's commitment towards maintaining the bilateral ties. New era, and we wish to um, to uh, complete the uh, uh, consensus from both leaders of Zambia and China to uh, uh, deepen our uh, uh, okay. uh, to deepen our relations between China and Zambia, and also to so to benefit the people of Zambia and also the people of Africa. Sarah Miti reporting for Zanis in Chongwe. We now take our first break. Join us for more interesting stories after the break. How I Made It is a program that delves into the many success stories of different people from all walks of life. Watch How I Made It on Zanis TV every Thursday at 18.30 hours on the Topster channel Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH. Zambia Today is a program that keeps you informed on various government policies and programs. Join us every Tuesday at 18 hours on the NIS TV, Topster Platform, Channel 6 DTT and 458 DTH. Don't miss. While we continue with the news, now Smart Zambia Institute National Coordinator Pesich Nyama says 
the newly launched access to internet connectivity at the Kazungula one-stop border post is aimed at enhancing operations at the facility. Mr. Chinyama says a similar connectivity will be replicated at a border post across the country. Here is a report. Smart Zambia says it plans to implement online internet connectivity to all border points across the country. The access to connectivity for both government institutions and citizens using the borders will enhance operations at all entry and exit points. So far, Smart Zambia has already implemented this kind of connectivity at Kazungula one-stop border post in southern province, as highlighted by its national coordinator, Pese Chinyama. What we're going to implement here, which is access to connectivity for both uh, government institutions and uh, the citizens that are using this border, that connectivity must be implemented replicated in the other borders so that we have uh, a uniform kind of uh, border management system across the country. This is in line with the presidential directives that we've been given to ensure that there is a level of digitization in the borders that will reduce the time that is uh, spent managing the vehicles as they cross and also the time that is spent having vehicles that should not be inland, inland. Paison Chikoi is Smart Zambia Acting Director for Networks and is overseeing the implementation of this border internet connectivity program. So here at Kazungula One Stop Border Post, uh, Smart Zambia is trying to interlink all the agencies. As you know, uh, we're looking at uh, a coordinated border management uh, system. And for that system to be able to work, we're talking about all the agencies being able to speak as one. That can only happen if these are able to link with each other and at that point they'll be able to keep information in a buffer that when people are uh, coming to the border they'll be able to access that information as a single entity. And authorities at Zambia Revenue Authority in Kazungola District have given their feedback on the newly launched automated gate pass. I'd like to confirm that uh, we since launched the uh, automated gate pass, um, which is working so well so far, but just needs to um, heighten on the change management activities. So such initiatives um, as the automated gate pass go a, a very long way. Um, to try and expedite processing efficiency and clearance um, such that if they are pre-lodged on the customs portal, um, it becomes very easy. It means then our trucks, as they come into the control zone here at Kazungula One Stop Border Post, um, don't spend a lot of time. Lemli Kando, reporting for Zanis in Kazungula District of Southern Province. And now, Joma Mayor Javen Simoloka says government is set to put up 60 mechanized boreholes in selected parts of the district to alleviate the water challenges resulting from the drought. Mr. Simoloka was speaking when he addressed residents of Macha in Bambala constituents in Joma district during the launch of Tom Bendibi, a non profit organization which aims to mitigate the effects of climate change. Meanwhile, Bambala Member of Parliament, Joseph Musanje, has commended Tombendivi organization for coming up with an initiative of collecting garbage and turning it into compost manure. Constant Mudenda has more in this report. Poor waste management has oftentimes contributed to the environmental degradation which in turn impacts soil fertility to support plant life. A newly launched organization dubbed Tombendivi, focusing on mitigating the effects of climate change in major areas of Mbabala constituents, is keen to join the fight against climate change through proper waste management. The organization is collecting garbage and turning them into organic manure that are later used in gardening. Out of the waste, we can segregate all wastes, all types of wastes that which can de decompose and that which it cannot decompose. The idea came from the need to take care of our environment. We cannot talk about the environment without talking about the effects of climate change. 
It is for this reason that we are looking to partner with everyone. Babala member of parliament Joseph Musanje together with the district and civic leadership are happy with the initiative. And on behalf of government, we appreciate and thank you most sincerely, the organizers of this project. This speaks to one of the sustainable development goals. It speaks to the national vision, the eighth national development plan. It speaks to the vision of His Excellency President Hagai Nijinema. He has been preaching about resilience in terms of sustaining ourselves. We thank you, management of this organization. organization A for providing employment to our people. Government, on the other hand, is responding to the effect of drought in the district by installing mechanized boreholes. Choma district has gotten 60 uh, upgrades of boreholes from ordinary boreholes to become uh, solar-driven boreholes. The idea is to have more water for the people, for the community, and indeed livestock. This initiative has also been incorporated in some schools to train the pupils on waste management. Costa Kimdenda, Zanis, in Joma District, Southern Province. While also in the news, Suloisi Municipal Council has approved the construction of a business center, five star hotel, and intercity bus station projects, which have been pending over the years. The construction will be undertaken using the public-private partnership model. The council approved the proposal that was presented by the town clerk, Stanley Mbewe, during the fourth ordinary council meeting. More in this report. It is the fourth ordinary Solozi Municipal Council meeting where various matters have been tackled, including land allocations. Solozi town clerk, Stanley Mbewe, gives his report on selected managerial issues for the decision of the council. The management stands here to request for your authority that you worship to undertake projects using PPP partnership for construction of a business center at a land near your site, five-star hotel at Utah Live Land and intercity bus station at the land next to ZNS. The proposal to use the PPP model has been consensually approved by the council. The vision of this council is actually to update the status uh, of this district, the status of the municipal council, the status of city. And these projects that we are talking about here will actually drive us to that status. Meanwhile, Solozi Mayor Remy Kalepa has this to say. My take is on the Utah Live. I wish to say to mention that the sports component should not be left out during designs or maybe developers' proposals. We should always have it in mind that we find ways and means of modernizing sports amenities on that piece of land while we develop other activities that we have what we intend to see there. Reporting for the NIS News in Solozi District, Jenfa Mutoshi. And now in health news, Njanji Seventh-day Adventist Women Ministries has donated assorted items to the University Teaching Hospital Women and Newborn Hospital. And Women's Ministry leader Angela Fula says the assorted items worth 3,000 kwacha are meant to assist the expectant mothers who are facing birth complications among others. And speaking after making their donation, Ms. Fuller also said the women's ministries will endeavor to do more of such gestures. And UTH Labour Ward nursing sister Rodia Mulolo said the gesture by the Njanji Seventh-day Adventist Women's Ministry is very encouraging to both the ailing women and her staff. Ms. Mulolo encouraged the women to do more of such gestures as they go a long way in not only helping patients but in families as well. We have come to visit UTH Obstetrics ICU and we are told this is an, a, a unit where women facing complications as a result of pregnancy are being nursed. So 
So this morning, we've donated this goods worth of 3,000 to the unit to help the patients that are admitted here. So I just want to say thank you so much to the women ministries for uh, thinking of us and uh, with these women with these complications, you know, uh, these are the times when you really need help from people and when they remember you when you are down there, it really encourages us and also the relatives as well. You people are doing a lot of things. As a hospital alone, we cannot afford to meet all the demands. But with these external uh, gestures that we receive, at least we are taking and we really appreciate continue doing the same. While we continue with the news and this time around in education segment, about 770 girls are benefiting from the Keeping Girls in School project in Lusangazi district of Eastern Province. Now, Zanis reports that the district has a total of 28 schools benefiting from the project, out of which 20 are primary schools and 8 secondary schools. Helen Chisha filed in this report. With 770 girls benefiting from the Keeping Girls in School KGS program in Lusangazi district of Eastern Province, the district held the annual symposium for 2024 with the theme Unlocking a Potential, Securing a Future. However, Lusangazi District Commissioner Mike Tembo, who was represented by Christopher Matokwani, explained government's commitment to the program. It is the desire of the government of the Republic of Zambia to see to it that more girls access secondary and indeed tertiary education. It is for this reason that KGS in its service delivery has introduced the KGS case management system which is made to put intervention such as retention of girls in school. And the district education board secretary gives more details on how the program is moving in the district. But in the district, there are 770 girls enrolled across its schools from grade 8 to 12. And we are happy to report to you that currently there are five students that are enrolled in public, private colleges or universities. While Chief Sangwe and Chief Nyampande encouraged girls to concentrate on their education. Abstain from any sex, don't go into any marriages. Be focused, know what you want to be in future. You have the power within your hands, you can choose who you want to be. It's your choice. Add value to yourself and have self-confidence in yourself. Know who you are. It's because maybe you think any marriages add value to you. To me, um, it's a bit tricky, I think. Sometimes it's divided as a woman. And some of the girls benefiting from the program thanked government for looking into their welfare. I just want to thank the government for coming up with the idea of KGS. It has really helped us a lot. Many people drop out, pregnant girls, they are coming back to school and it's all thanks to you. I want to thank the government for bringing KGS because it's helping a lot of girls. I promise to give you the best. Helen Chisha in Lusangazi District, Eastern Province. Now, in a related story, some schools in Shangambu district have joined the commemoration of the Keeping Girls in School initiative. And since the introduction of the initiative in the district in 2021, many vulnerable girls have also benefited from the program. unleash a girl's full potential is by investing in higher education. Well, the Ministry of Education has helped drive this notion through its Girls Education and Women's Empowerment and Livelihood Project component called Keeping Girls in School Initiative. Since the initiative 
was introduced in Shangombo district, about 1,700 girls in Twin Pond schools have benefited from the program. District Education Board Secretary Joy Hagawandi gives an overview of the Jewel Project and the Keeping Girls in School initiative through Rosemary Mangondo, a grade 12 school learner at Shangombo Secondary School. Had a certificate or statement of results to improve it. It also includes girls who had dropped out while in grade 9 to 12 and had a report form from their previous school. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, based on their entry police and the national. Meanwhile, Shangombo District Commissioner Mwita Siamana says this year's theme for the Keeping Girls in School Symposium, Promoting Girls' Education Through Female Leadership Models, is an approach for raising girls for future leadership responsibilities. This year's theme for the KGS Symposium in Shangombo is special and touching. It, it brings out the approach to developing social justice in society that the Zambian government and the Sadiq region member states have adopted in order to promote equit leadership. It is the approach of raising school girls for future leadership responsibilities, an approach that demands that female public workers and all responsible adult females and District Council Chairperson Inonge Mubika gives a motivational speech to the girls. For instance, figures like current Speaker of the National Assembly, Nelly Muti, State Council, first female Minister of Justice, Princess Kasune, APSA Bank CEO, Mizinga Melu, and Electoral Commission of Zambia ECZ Chairperson Mangala Zalumes, State Council, including myself here, have become shining examples of the importance of education. The colorful symposium attracted about 15 schools around the district and several stakeholders from different ministries. The Jewel Project started in January 2016 and will come to an end this December 2024. Judith Mwinga reporting for Zanis in Shangombo District. We continue with education news and now in Western Province, the Campaign for Female Education Comfort is running a female education sponsorship program in all the 16 districts in the province. In Senanga District, 20 schools are on the Comfort program where over 500 pupils are beneficiaries. Ikachana Sindala has more in the following report. A girl child needs to be taken care of in education so as to attain equal learning standards with the male folk. This is why some progressive education programs are on board to support the girl child in order to strike a gender balance with the male folk. Senanga District is among other programs benefiting from the Comfort program, which is being appreciated in the area. Comfort here is sponsoring a good number of girls uh, by supporting them, I mean they are supplying them with the, what, uh, the requirements they need to make their stay here in school possible. And uh, they've been here for uh, the longest time, I think from 2006. They've been taking care of the children and they don't just end here up to tertiary education. And Comfort is paying boarding fees for the, for the learners. They are buying them requirements like books, sanitary pads, the whole uniform, and, uh, and, and bedding. So that is the package that Comfort is, uh, is giving to these uh, uh, learners to make sure that their stay here in school is as comfortable as it should be. Senanga District Education Board Secretary Katukula Mwanda is appreciating the Comfort program and appealing for more sponsorship to strike a balance on progression rates. Yes, we appreciate what Comfort is actually doing in actually supporting our girl children. We also appeal to other organizations uh, to come on board to actually support our children already. We have um, the Keeping Girls in School program where our children uh, that are coming from 
the vulnerable households under social cash transfer are actually being supported, which is actually a very good um, uh, initiative. So we appeal to other well wishers to also come on board to support our girl children because um, the rate of um, progression for our girls um, comparatively to the boys is not very good. Our expectation is that um, if we start, say, with 100 pupils um, at grade 8, our expectation is that all the grade 8 people, 100 pupils should progress to grade 12. Esenanga Secondary School, Grade 11, Comfort Beneficiary Rosa Muyema, is thankful to Comfort's works. I just want to say thank you to Comfort. It has done a lot. You know, I was from the village, and when I came to this school, I literally had nothing. But when Comfort sponsored me, it paid the school fees. And at that time, school fees were very expensive, and there was no free education. Apart from paying school fees, Comfort gave me so much, so many things. It gave me the skirt which I'm putting on, the uniform, the necktie, and the jays is doing court seasons. Sometimes they also give us uh, shoes, blankets, and bugs. So it has been a very great help to us. Ikacha Nasindala, Zanis in Senanga District, Western Province. And our Chikankata Member of Parliament, Jacqueline Sambao, has commissioned two by one three classroom blocks using the 2023 Constituents Development Fund. Ospin Sichombe has more in the following report. There was jubilation at Nanduva and Mulao Secondary Schools in Chikankata constituency of Southern Province during the commissioning of one by three classroom blocks built using the 2023 Constituency Development Fund. The pupils from both schools and parents led by Chikankata constituency member of parliament, Jacqueline Sabao, joined the jubilation. Other senior government and party members witnessed the official handover of the infrastructure. Today we witness the frustration of our effort, better learning environment for our pupils, ensuring that they have the facilities necessary to succeed in their academics. At Mulao School we have completed a one by three classroom block at a cost of 570, 602, six, six quarter and provide the desk worth 152-215 Chikan Kata Council Chairperson Conrad Ngoma and Chikan Kata District Education Board Secretary Lizzie Nyoni also expressed the following during the occasion. The uh, Chairman means well in the implementation of this CDF project and is very determined to ensure that these projects benefit the local people. This support is through the construction of quality housing units, classrooms, provision of places. This has greatly improved the learning of our pupils. Meanwhile, pupils from both Mulao and Nanduwa secondary schools expressed happiness over the commissioning of the classroom block at their schools. I extend my heartfelt gratitude for the remarkable initiative and unwavering support in the construction of our new one by three classroom block. I'd like to thank the government for this gesture as that has been extended to this school. May the helping hand be stretched to so many other schools in terms of infrastructure development. Constituency Development Fund has not only brought about infrastructure, but also improved the lives of the people. Zanis reports in Chikankata District of Southern Province. And finally, in the news, the Road Transport and Safety Agency has recorded over 300 deaths in road traffic accidents in the first quarter of 2024. And speaking at the ongoing trade international at the Zambia International Trade Fair in Dola today, Ratsa Chief Executive Officer Amun Mwemba said, most of the 376 deaths recorded were caused through non-adherence to wearing a seatbelt by drivers and passengers. Mr. Mwemba, however, disclosed that there has been a reduction in the number of road traffic accidents this year by 47.3% compared to last year. 
He revealed that about 4,523 road traffic accidents have since been recorded in the first quarter of this year, 2024. Mr. Mwemba has since appealed to members of the public to ensure that the driver, together with the passengers, are in seat belts to avoid penalties. Among many risk factors in causing road crashes or, cause or increased road injury severity, failure to wear, to wear seat belts is actually amongst the, the top four of causes of death in terms of road accidents. The other three are failure to wear helmets while uh, riding a motorcycle. The second one, of course, is not adhering to the speed limit, speeding. And the fourth is driving under the influence of alcohol. So, as you can see, failure to wear seatbelts ranks amongst those top four. And children and under the age of 10 and below the height of 1.5 meters are the most vulnerable. Just to give you an idea, the first quarter of this year, we recorded 4,523 road traffic crashes. First quarter of 2024. So we've managed to reduce the number of road traffic crashes by 47.3% from last year, which is a huge reduction. And yet, the number of road deaths in that first quarter has gone up. 376. So what that informs us is that we've got fewer road accidents, almost by half, but people are still dying. So why are they dying? Simple things like wearing seatbelts, simple things like strapping their kids in when they leave home or they leave wherever they've gone out, these things are not happening. We can legislate all we want. But as long as there's no personal responsibility and people don't take it upon themselves to actually do these things, there will be absolutely no effect at all. Rules are just rules. Rules become effective when people start adhering to them. Well, that item brings us to the end of the news. And before I finish, we look at the headlines once again. Government committed to supporting East Irrigation schemes. China commended for construction of Tazara rail line. 770 girls benefit from keeping girls in school projects in the Sangazi districts. Last two CDF projects commissioned in Chikankata district. Well, on behalf of the entire production crew here at Zanis, Thank you so much for staying with us. It has been Margaret Kangwa and my sign language interpreter has been Nea Mumbi. Stay tuned.